Hello, it's Dr. Rohde. Today we want to start talking a little bit more about hormones and we're going to break down into male and female today to start with. And the reason I want to start with those is really that's probably the most popular thing you see in the press. If you open up any magazine there will be ads for hormone replacement uh, for men and, uh, and of course testosterone replacement for men. And I think people need to understand how this works and how to do it appropriately. So there's a lot more involved in really getting it right than just putting in um, um, a pill or a patch to treat a symptom. You really need to know where you're at. And so as I always say, if you're not testing, you're guessing. Uh, and I've never understood why somebody would imagine that your hormones are off uh, and tell you just to take a pill uh, or put on a patch without measuring it. It's like trying to guess what your blood sugar is without measuring it. It just doesn't make sense. So what I wanted to start with, and I left the picture up from our prior talk about optimal gut health. And the reason I left that up is if you think about it, all of our hormones are made from products that come from the food that we eat. And if our gut isn't working well, if we don't digest our food and absorb the nutrients, it's harder to make the ingredients. It's no different than trying to make a cake uh, without enough flour. So very simple analogy. And so the gut health actually ties into this hormone chart. And I enlisted Mr. Bones here for us. And I'm going to zoom in on this for a second, if you can take a look at that. And the point, the biggest point I want to make with this is you look at all of the hormones literally start with cholesterol, okay, which is fat. And we're cholesterol crazy in the United States. And then all of the other hormones literally cascade from cholesterol. And so you can see here, here's progesterone, here we have testosterone, and we have cortisol um, uh, down here that literally keeps us functional and helps our immune system work. So thinking about those hormones, we really need to measure a number of these to figure out what's going, out, uh, going on in the body. And then looking back uphill also, what's going on in our hypothalamus, the directs our adrenal glands, our thyroid, our uh, male and female hormones to actually be produced and monitored or managed in the appropriate levels. It's a really pretty uh, complex situation un unless you're measuring, you really don't know what's going on. So in women, what are some of the most common symptoms we see? Probably the biggest issue I see when women start to go through menopause or they have a hormonal imbalance is sleep problems. Sleep is vital. If you aren't getting six, seven, eight hours of refreshing continuous sleep at night, then st things start to fall apart during the daytime. And the second most common complaint I hear is fatigue. After that, we see hot flashes, we see night sweats, we see mood swings, and those are all fairly common signs that hormones are out of balance. And so really trying to get those back into balance is important to start with the gut. And everybody always wonders, why do I ask all these gut questions? Because it all ties together to get things working appropriately. And one of the biggest things I want you to start thinking about as you're thinking about hormones and what you can do to manage gut, and that is home, is to work on cleaning up chemicals in your environment because those chemicals are what we call hormone disruptors and they start to interfere with how your body can produce hormones. So toxins like the plasticizers in plastic bottles, uh, bisphenol A is a hormone disruptor. And if you drink out of plastic bottles all the time, you're putting those chemicals in and they interfere with your ovaries uh, ability to make uh, the um, female hormones appropriately and the same thing for men. They interfere with sperm production and with hormone production. So really all of those tie together and if you can start changing to greener products not only for house cleaning but also for what uh, chemicals or uh, products you put on your skin, that can make a huge difference in how your body is able to make hormones and that is probably one of the biggest points I want to make. I see men and women that come in in their 20s and 30s and they have larger hormone disruptions or problems than some people uh, when they come in in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I know that's surprising to hear that, but it's because the people at the younger age have been exposed to a lot more chemicals at a younger age in their lives than my older patients have been because all of these chemicals that disrupt our uh, hormones have really mushroomed in use since World War II. And so the people that were born uh, during or before World War II have a lot less uh, time span with exposure to chemicals than we do now, where it often begins in utero. And for women, I really want you to think about before you have another child or before you plan your first child, to think about preconception evaluation of toxins in your body so you can really clean the environment that your child is going to be living in those first nine months of the year 
and then thinking about why do we have all these kids with ADD, autism, allergies, asthma, and even early childhood cancers. And it again starts with literally swimming in up to 300 chemicals in the woman's body when the baby is forming. And so you think about how those affect long-term health and how each generation is getting successively less healthy, if you will. Um, and that's a real concern for me. So a take home point with that, start cleaning your environment, start fixing your gut, and then we can work on hormone balance.